Hello, so startup is basically 20 years old at this point, actually 19 years. And I think they'll make it only available for space-based Startopia to be bought on Steam and maybe you'll get the Startopia game for free, I don't know. But it's kind of cool that they decided to remake or remaster a lot of games because, you know, I think these games had a lot of charm to them and this was one of them. So you're basically controlling a space station. It's more like a sim game, but your role is going to be held accountable for your actions by the artificial intelligence, which is basically like GLaDOS, except it's... It's more sarcastic. Where is my music? I need more music in here. By the way, as a small note, Calypso is... Uh, they are the guys that made Tropico 6 and they gave me a key for Tropico and some other games, so I guess they are the good guys. Thanks, Calypso. Now, before we do anything, let's just play the tutorial, so you will kind of see how the humor in this game is. By the way, the artificial intelligence might insult Welcome you so to the much. Startopia Basics Introductory Course Command R. Before the RFS can unleash you on the known galaxies, we are obliged to offer you this introductory course. This is mainly for insurance purposes. But don't worry, we'll keep it as brief as possible. This scenario you will introduce you to the basics of controlling your Startopia base simulator. So the artificial intelligence might insult you enough that you'll feel that you'll feel so bad that you leave the game, and I'm not joking. Initiate welcome protocol. Welcome to the Startopia Basics Introductory Course, Command R. Your Startopia Base Simulator allows you to easily take Commander. You can also pick up several objects at once. Just give it a try. To drop an object from the matter storage, please mark that object in the matter storage and then use your input device to drop it at the position your virtual marker is pointing to. Yeah, of course, I'm getting way ahead of the, of the tutorial, but... Good work, Commander. Your Startopia Base Simulator offers you a detailed view of all kinds of things, be it rooms, aliens, plants or crates. Now, please use the corresponding button in the detailed view to unpack the crate and place its contents. I went a few steps ahead just because I wanted to showcase some other things. Look at how cool the game is right now. The, these are the Bactorians. Wait, wait, wait. They have all sorts of stats, like a clean atmosphere and this is food and some other stuff. So you basically can see what all of them have want. The fuzzy charging station has been installed, Commander. I am of course sure that you have this basic knowledge, but just to be on the safe side, I wanted to point out that energy is the universal currency of all known galaxies. RFS employees are also paid in energy, but they are charged for the amount of nutrient slime consumed during working hours. Your Startopia Basis Energy Core can store a limited amount of energy. When a room is built, it blocks a portion of your energy, the so-called activation energy. Deactivate a room to free up its activation energy. Oh, what? What are they saying to me? So As the fuzzies... mentioned in the beginning, your job is to keep arriving alien visitors happy. A fuzzy charging station is unsuitable for this, as only a few aliens will enjoy a strong electric shock. Please open your base simulator's construction menu. Excellent, Commander. You manage Commander, in addition to dedicated rooms such as the fuzzy charging station, there are variable rooms which can vary in size, such as the berth. For this room, first select the floor area that the room is to occupy. Please note the minimum and maximum permitted sizes. To relieve your limited synaptic capacity, the room is shown in blue if it fits in terms of dimensions. You can furnish a variable sized room yourself, Commander. The construction menu shows you the different objects that are available. So called mandatory objects are marked with a star and absolutely have to be added to the room in order for it to be built. In the case of the berth, for example, this applies to the door. Bravo, Commander, with that door your berth would now theoretically be buildable. Note that a room should often include the optional objects in order for it to perform its full function. Aliens can use the berth's optional objects to satisfy their basic needs such as food, sleep and more. Personally, I would find it more efficient to simply put all carbon-based life forms in nutrient tanks and just leave them there. But apparently that doesn't seem to be an option. Of course it's not an option, so... The berth has been successfully placed. Now sit back and watch how the electronic units do all the real work, Commander. Oh, you're good at that. Would you like me to increase your ration of nutrient slime? 
Oh, I see that has already been done. <laughs> so if you saw Wally, this is basically kind of a Commander, mocking. According to my sensors, okay. your inaction has been rewarded. When your visitors satisfy their needs on the station, you receive prestige, an RFS designated pseudo currency, which you can use for new empowerments such as new rooms and other utilities. Use the research menu to enable the communication center. What? Where? Okay, we can play now. Oh, we have to wait a little because if you satisfy their needs, you basically get research points. <laughs> Everything looks so cool. I mean, the game is still not finished, but it looks kind of extraordinary. It's kind of basically like Wally with aliens. That's how it looks to me in a way. <laughs> hey, don't. Oh, come on, guys. Don't throw garbage all over the floor. You'll attract roaches. Uh, you'll attract uh, insects. Oh, no. You. You'll attract... Uh, I don't know, I don't want to insult the bug, so I don't know what to call them. You'll attract uh, unwanted attention. Yeah, that's better. As you can see, they form a nice little orderly queue. And they'll enter the place as soon as it gets more free. Some of them will actually only want food or water or juice, and some of them will Commander, want to sleep. I would like to kindly point oh. out that although there is no time limit for this course, the R excellent commander, you have successfully used the UI to unlock the communication center. <laughs> I hope that didn't take too much out of you. Bugrathorians work in the communication center receiving radio transmissions. This is extremely useful for alerting you to various events that you can use to your advantage. Now, please build the communication center. Yeah, if you take too long, it will actually start to pester you so much that you will either, I don't know, quit the game or just build whatever the artificial intelligence wants you to build. Uh, again, this is a tutorial stage, so I'll not be building everything according to the plan or what you need. So, Startup is basically a donut with multiple levels or donut level. So you can go to the fun deck and then the bio deck Brilliant. and this is the Commander, sub deck. Your ability to follow simple commands in an almost acceptable time frame will certainly be useful later. In order for the communication center to function, you'll need to hire some Bugrathorians. You can do this via either the detailed view of the corresponding aliens or more efficiently via the alien overview. The alien overview lets you keep track of all visitors to your station, Commander. Furthermore, my evaluation processor evaluated them and translated them into two concrete values for you. Ability and Dedication While ability describes an alien's competence, dedication reflects how long an alien will perform their duties before they want to satisfy their needs again. Commander, I suggest you hire some Bugrathorians to get the communication center up and running. Excellent, Commander. You've hired your first Bugrathorian via the alien overview. Please note that you can also hire aliens via their detailed view. Okay, so basically telling you that you can recruit aliens if you just look at them. Oh, and they have a little star on their back. That's so cute. It reminds me of that animation that Felix Coolgrave did. Now... Fire? No, don't fire. Okay, they are going to their jobs. Oh, so if they have a star, they go to their job. Commander, a Bugrathorian has begun work in the communication center. Excellent, Commander. You have now learned how to operate the virtual camera, call up the detailed view of objects, place rooms, and hire aliens. In times past, this introductory course was sufficient to run a Startopia base. However, following an internal assessment of the increased number of deaths, the course has now been expanded. In the next course, you will learn how to keep alien visitors happy and alive. Mm -hmm. Happy and alive. Well, that will be good. Now, again, I, I skipped most of the parts because these missions will get more and more interesting, and it will Welcome kind of showcase to more. To Startopia, introductory course, Command R. In this scenario, we look at the primitive carbon-based life forms that will visit your Startopia base and their petty needs. According to the Galactic Statutes, the RFS is obliged to inform you that the death of visitors to your station does not have any positive effects. <laughs> yeah, don't let the aliens die. Initiate welcome protocol. Welcome to the second part of the Startopia Basics Introductory Course, Command R. 
Commander, after our experiences in the first part and the evaluation of your mediocre handling of the Startopia base simulator, I took the liberty of pre-positioning the most necessary rooms in order to keep the completion time for this course within reasonable limits. Don't worry, my imitation subprocessor copied your actions and placed the rooms just as inefficiently <laughs> as you would have done. The foundation of all Startopia bases are the alien visitors that come on board. Apart from the official reason that these stations are places of encounter, which are supposed to ensure lasting peace between carbon-based life forms and so on, visitors also have a considerable amount of energy with them, which they are only too happy to spend. But in return they also want to be entertained. At the moment this station does not particularly impress your visitors. To get a quick overview, you can inform yourself via the station ratings. First, open the station ratings. Command R, commence operations. Oh, they want me to do something. Well, okay, I'll do it in a minute. So you have the garbage bots, which actually pick up all the garbage. So let's watch what the fuzzies do. And they all, all have cute names like fuzzy or sweet. Sweet. Mm, I guess they just go and do their thing. Okay, now let's let's see the ratings. Ooh, why is this person so mad? Why does she have a fire? To bunch of what? <laughs> Start up here as much like my dad's feet. Why pay when you can steal? That's not the way to treat the station. Okay, let's open the ratings. Excellent, Commander. Thanks to the station ratings, you can see what alien races think of your base in general and, thanks to social media, use your visitor spitter comments to determine where the problems on Startopia lie. At the moment, for example, there seems to be a problem with poor air quality. To eliminate this I have materialized some atmosphere filter crates near your energy core. Commander, you can still view much more information in any given alien's detailed view. Now, please build the atmosphere filters. Okay, we'll build some of them. As you can see, they actually place the rooms for you and this is kind of like a better... They did a better job than I did. Because the showers need to be kind of like that. So, five showers on the side of the room. Oh no, those are the sleeping pots. These are the showers. <laughs> they look like car washes, so that's why I forgot. We also have cool looking aliens. Steve, Steve and Hawking. Yeah, all the names are kind of cool and uh, imaginative. This is the garbage, but as you can see, it's, it's clearly picking up the garbage. So you can, you can designate a fuzzy to perform Pick up an certain tasks. From the matter storage. Please mark that object in the matter storage and then use your input device to drop it at the position your virtual marker is pointing to. Excellent, Commander. You have now learned how to use the matter storage. You could almost replace a fuzzy now. <laughs> oh man, they are so cool. So they want us to build Commander, atmosphere to improve filters. Your mediocre results, I have taken the liberty of displaying the atmospheric distribution in the virtual camera. Blue areas are okay, while red areas smell like muftine, a creature that wallows in feces and suffers from diarrhea and flatulence throughout its entire life cycle. You should place the atmosphere filters mainly in red areas. It's squeaky clean, right? Okay, the people are upset about their quality, so let's wait until they build something. Ooh, they're actually working very, very hard. The need for clean atmosphere has reached a critical level. Use the atmosphere view to identify critical areas and set up more atmosphere filters. Excellent, Commander. My evaluation processor has examined the placement of the atmosphere filters and has calculated an efficiency score of 45.3%. Dot. That's more than I thought you'd get. Now let's turn our attention to the fun deck. Commander, so far fun we've deck. limited ourselves to the sub deck. Actually, many of the Startopia bases consist of several decks. The fun deck is the place your aliens go to have fun, and that's where they're most willing to spend their energy. 
As a precaution, I have already pre-positioned some rooms for satisfying basic needs so that your visitors do not have to keep taking the elevator back to the berth on the sub-deck all the time. In addition to these basic needs, aliens later also crave entertainment. However, in order to build more rooms, we must first expand the fun deck. Open the bulkhead on the fun deck to take over the sector behind it. What are you? Are you a space lizard Leviathan? Roundish la lard biscuits, yeah. Well, I guess they are big. Okay, so what they what do they want me to do? Oh, they want me to open another sector. So the basic idea of the game is to you will open other sectors when you are ready. So this will cost energy. So if you don't manage your energy, you lose the game very, very fast. Very good, Commander. A disco has already been built behind the airlock. This provides entertainment for your visitors. However, it has not been connected to the energy grid yet and is therefore not operational. Outside the initial fun deck sector, the other energy hungry rooms on the fun deck must be connected to the energy grid using energy distributors. In addition, Celebramer work in the disco where they entertain dancers with the finest beats. <laughs> okay, okay. Commander, an alien's need for drink has reached a critical level. You should keep an eye on your berth and possibly provide more drink facilities on both the sub deck and fun deck. Excellent, Commander. You have hired Celebramer. All you have to do now is power up the disco using an energy distributor. Everything looks a little more cool in this sector because as you can see it's more fun, it's more organized and this is a sleeping pot hotel, it's not like the other things. Loot box lottery, which is kind of... Ah, you can guess from what this is. Black hole drop. Well, this will be an interesting one. Okay, let's see what the other aliens are doing while we... The fuzzies are building this. Come on, the disco doesn't have energy. And yeah, it kind of depends on your play style. Commander, to put the disco into operation, you have to connect it to the energy system via an energy distributor and then hire Celebramer to work there. Please proceed accordingly. Well, I did this thing, so what does the game want me to do again? Uh, maybe they have to be near each other? I completed the tutorial, by com but I forgot how this is done, so... Again, it's a close beta. Sometimes you'll not get the full explanation for what you need to do. So, what's wrong here? I can't activate it. So, what's wrong with you? I can deactivate. Okay, let's deactivate. And activate you again. Weird, maybe I built it before the game... Okay, let's build one again. Oh well, let's take a look uh, on the creative aliens. Oh, he has a space element? That's new. <laughs> you might remember, they were not wearing helmets or anything before, but I guess this is the pleasure they can they have to have their... Pro oh, look at it. The ears are coming out of the helmet and flopping in the air. Eh, cool game. Come on, is this thing ready to go? Mm, not ready. Oh, that's a good little fuzzy. Very good, Commander. The disco is now operational. Please note that each energy distributor literally distributes energy and thus constantly draws on your energy reserves. So it is not advisable to erect vast numbers of them. Excellent Commander, you have now learned to analyze your visitors' needs and use the fun deck. 
I'm proud of you. Sarcasm co routine overload. <laughs> okay, that was a really interesting event. I built it too early, so that's why I didn't count. But the black hole uh, fun thing was amazing. Yeah, the animations for the game are really good. Welcome to the biomes on Startopia introductory course, Command R. In this scenario, we will focus on the bio deck on Startopia, which, where available, not only provides a cozy atmosphere for the alien visitors and satisfies their need for nature, but whose plants also provide important resources on Startopia. Yes, so now we can unlock farm and some other protocol. stuff. Welcome to the biomes on Startopia introductory course, Command R. Commander, you should know that crates have a maximum shelf life. If they just lie around for too long, they break and become nothing more than compressed garbage. To avoid this, crates can be stored in cargo hold where a temporal loop protects them from breaking down. To spare you the embarrassment of failure, I have already placed a cargo hold for you just to be sure. Generally your fuzzies take care of storing crates on their own. But you can also assist them and use the matter storage to pick up crates and beam them into the cargo hold. Alternatively, you can continue to mostly just sit around and slurp down that nutrient slime, just like you've done so far. Unfortunately, it makes no difference to the RFS. Command R, commence operations. Okay, now let's wait a little to annoy the robot or the artificial intelligence. Let's can see the kind of... A crate broke because it lay around too long. Now all it's good for is garbage for the recycling station. Commander, you can also pick up several objects at the same time. Just give it a try. To drop an object from the matter storage, please mark that object in the matter storage and then use your input device to drop it at the position your virtual marker is pointing to. Splendid, Commander, you have actually mastered this simple assignment. Crates can be obtained in different ways, but in this course we will focus on the bio deck. Now please switch to the bio deck. Welcome to the bio deck, Commander. Here you will find different biomes in which a wide variety of plants are grown. Once a plant is fully grown, it can be harvested using its detailed view. During this harvesting process, the plants are transformed into resources through molecular transmutation and immediately packed into crates. By the way, sectors on the bio deck also produce oxygen crates, which are used for atmosphere filters. This production correlates with the number of plants in that sector. So it basically produces oxygen crates. Okay, let's have some plants from... Okay, how about another one? Oh, that was not the right way to do it, okay. So let's do things the right way. You can move things around and you can actually create a beautiful garden-like thing in this place. So, Commander, you I harvest. admit I forgot to mention it explicitly because it seemed so obvious. I didn't consider just who was sitting in the base simulator, forgive me. Would you be so kind as to please harvest some of these plants so that I can evaluate whether you can still follow me intellectually? <laughs> okay, again, the artificial intelligence makes this game commander. so much better. Manual harvesting of the plants can be rather laborious. Fortunately, you can hire dryads to harvest mature plants and grow new ones. I strongly advise you to make use of them. So let's have some dryads because the, apparently the game wants us to be really cool about it. Commander, by the way, hired dryads. Congratulations, Commander. You have successfully hired some dryads. Although you already had to hire aliens in the previous courses, upon evaluation of your brain capacity, it could not be excluded that you had already forgotten <laughs> the relevant steps. Next, you need to learn how to terraform the bio deck. To do so, open the terraforming view. Logically, this can only be Commander, as already mentioned, you can terraform the bio deck to your liking and create different biomes. Each biome has its own plants, which yield different resources during harvesting. Alien visitors also come to the bio deck to satisfy their need for nature. They can do this in the biome which corresponds to their homeworld or near bodies of water, which all aliens enjoy. By the way, you can use the terraforming overview to tell your dryads which biomes they should grow and harvest plants in. Now terraform a section of the bio deck. 
Actually, they build more food, but you can't enter that bulkhead. Okay, so we need a rainforest biome. It's kind of a cool mechanic, but they don't really expand on it. So, uh, rainforest. Excellent, Commander. Now please fill another section of the bio deck with water. Moon. No, that doesn't look right. Uh, radioactive? Well, that doesn't look good either. So maybe this... Okay, let's stop fooling around. So let's place also some water. Excellent, Commander. You have now learned how to store crates and terraform the bio deck. This gives you a 54.6% probability of surviving more than 5 minutes in a real test scenario. Congratulations. <laughs> well, this was the tutorial. As you can see, it's not such a hard game, but for now it only has a couple of campaign missions. The Garbage Empire and the Viral Vegetation. I'll probably play those as well, but I'll be waiting for a little more content. Yeah, it's a fun game and it's going to be a wild game as well. You can also play on this one, the Skirmish. Main menu. And they basically did everything right in my opinion. The animations look crazy good. Anyway, see you next time. Bye.